Hey, what's up everybody? So September 2021 is WTSO's 15th birthday anniversary. And they've asked me to roll out a few fun weekly tastings just to celebrate. For these specials, we're mashing up wines from prior tastings so that we can look at them from a different perspective. I guess you can consider these as sort of a remix of our greatest hits. With this set, I've based my selection on fruit forward reds from around the world. What exactly is a fruit forward wine? Let's go forward and find out. When tasting wines, we use a lot of colorful descriptors, from fruity and fresh, to oaky and spicy, to leathery and even meaty. All of these terms actually fall into three main categories, primary, secondary, and tertiary, and they have to do with the winemaking process from start to finish. Primary characteristics in a wine come from the grape itself. So if you picked a grape right off the vine, what would it taste like? It would likely be fruity, floral, and even herbal. Secondary flavors come from inside the winery. Oak aging and yeast contact create secondary characteristics like oaky and toasty notes in a wine. And tertiary aromas and flavors are ones that you would associate with an older wine. Is it starting to oxidize? Is it nutty, savory, or caramelized? Those are tertiary descriptors. We're focused on primary characteristics today. The wines we have in this pack are relatively young and they don't see a lot of winery intervention so their flavor profile should be more in the primary category. What we should be tasting here is the beauty of the naked grape, and that's what makes a wine fruit forward. So let's taste them. Our first wine is from Bernardus in California and is made from the Pinot Noir grape. Pinot Noir is particularly high in chemical compounds that give it strong red fruit and floral notes. So right off the vine, it's a very pungent grape. This grape is also low in tannins, which means it won't be very astringent or bitter. And this Pinot Noir only sees a small amount of oak aging, which allows all that primary flavor to express itself. All signs point to it being a fruit forward wine. Well, the bouquet itself is intense, full of ripe raspberries and some floral notes of roses in there. On the palate, it's a tart and tangy wine, really high acids and strong cranberry flavors. When it comes to fruit forward wines, Pinot Noir is one of the first that comes to mind. Bernardus has done a lovely job here of just sort of stepping out of the way and really letting the grape express itself. Our second wine is from Romain Duvernay in France and is made from the Grenache grape. And Grenache, like Pinot Noir, is another grape that creates light, low tannin wines that bring buckets of fresh fruit to the palate. In France, Grenache makes famous high-end wines like Chateauneuf du Pape, Gigon d'As, and this one, Caran. And this is blended with a bit of Syrah, which will give it some dark berry fruit and peppery herbal notes. This is a more intense wine, definitely fruity, but fruity in a different way. It's more savory, kind of like a plum. And the Syrah grape brings a nice peppery note to the finish, which I think qualifies as an herbal note. And the more time I spend with it, the uh, palate starts to open up and bring out these blueberry, blackberry flavors, so it, it is a fairly complex wine. This Grenache-based wine from Romain Duvernay is a fruit-forward wine. It just gets there in a slightly different way. It's more savory and herbal. Our third wine is from the northeast of Spain in a region known as Priorat where the main grape is Garnacha. And yes, that's the same grape as France's Grenache. This wine here is made with 50% Garnacha, and the other half is a grape called Carignan, which will bring some spicy notes to the mix. And this wine does see some oak aging, which will add some vanilla and spice, but I don't expect that it will take away from the fruitiness. Once again, the Grenache grape is bringing lots of blackberry and blueberry here, but they're more concentrated, almost like a reduction. There's also a balsamic vinegar kind of sweetness here, and I think that's because this wine is starting to get up there in age. This Priorat is exhibiting some secondary oak notes, and the balsamic notes are signs that the wine is aging, so that would be tertiary. So while it's still fruit forward, of the three in our tasting, it's definitely on its way to maturity. Wines exhibiting strong primary characteristics like the ones here are fairly easy to pair up with food. You just have to think in terms of herbs and spices that work well with fruit flavors. Here are three dishes that I think will partner well with our wines. Let's pair this Bernardus Soberain's Pinot Noir up with a hoisin glazed eggplant. Hoisin is a sweet and tangy sauce and will be an excellent complement to the red fruits in this wine. I'm gonna partner this Romain Duvernay Caran with steak a poivre. The meaty quality of the wine is a perfect match for the steak and the spice notes from the Syrah grape will complement the pepper in the dish. Fruit flavors are a great counterpart to spice, and that's why I think this fruity and spicy Canmar set from Priorat is the best option to pair up with some Spanish-style baked wings. So now you know what it means when a wine is fruit forward. Do you agree with my assessment, or do you have any questions or thoughts that you want to share? I always welcome comments in the section below this video. 
I'm glad I was able to help you put your best fruit forward when it comes to tasting these wines. To my partners at WTSO, happy 15th, and here's to many more years in health and happiness, and of course, drinking great wine. Cheers. Mm -hmm.